morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me on another Friday morning for the weekly Parsha Insights. This week. This week's Parsha, Parshas Koirach. Now, I think there's a powerful element um, to, to the story, the way, the way the Torah is written, in that the way it portrays our leaders, the way it portrays the Jews um, of that time, you know, we kind of have this, this stance when we, we look up, you know, we look up to these, these great rabbis and these great Jewish leaders, but it's fascinating the way it describes them. And and kind of it makes it very real. And we see in this week's parasha, it's so, so, it's so relevant when with Korach, the whole argument, the whole disagreement, the politics that were going on. Now this occurred and took place just after the episode of the spies. The Jews were told they were going to stay, due to the, the, the sin of the spies, the Jews were told they were going to stay in the desert for 40 years. Now you can imagine, imagine if right now in lockdown, Things are easing. But if something changes and we're told we have to be in lockdown for 40 years, how will politics look like? What will politics, what will, it, what will happen to the, to, the, to the politicians, to the people leading the country? It would look, it would be a very different story. So it's kind of similar to kind of situation there when the Jews were told that they're going to be stuck in the desert for 40 years, things started brewing. Now Korach turns up to, turns, who is actually a cousin of Moshe, he turns up to um, he, he approaches Moshe and he tells them, he tell, him, him and he comes with 250 men and he says, he's like, you know, how is it that you take, took, took the, all the positions? You know, Moshe, Moshe you're the, the, the leader of the Jewish people, Aaron's the high priest. What's going on over here? And he was kind of jealous. He wanted the power. And I think it's really interesting. How, how Karach really is, a, 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 he was a great man. I was learning this week by Treblo and he was explaining, I imagine there's a book called the Mesilas Yisharim. It is a, um, it's just a work by the Ramosha Chaim Nuzato, which is kind of like, if a person's able, it's, it's mastering self. If a person's able to study this work, this book, he's able to be the most elevated person. So he said, imagine if Karach, not just imagine, but imagine that Karach actually had mastered this entire book. He was an, an, an incredible individual, a prophet. His family were the ones that were carrying the Oran. They were the holiest of holies. They, 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 he, was, he was up there. So what went wrong? What happened? How does someone in leadership, how does someone, he was, he, he was, he was one of the, with the head tribes, the Levi who, who, was, who was working in the entire, working for, the, for, for Hashem, working for the Jewish people, how did it go wrong? And also the 250 men that were with him. They were called Anshe Shame, men of name. They were considered great people. They were the, 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 the actual the leaders of the tribe. Some say they were, they were, they were 23. He chose 23 from each tribe came together, the 23 judges. It's really, I just think it, it's amazing just when I was learning it and looking into it to see and imagine if this would happen today when great leaders, great people would kind of start be, you know, creating politics between each other. Who's right? Who's wrong? And I, I'm curious to think, what would we have felt? And, and I've heard that a lot of Jews back then were actually looking at Korach and his people. Possibly, maybe they are correct. Maybe they are right. And it seems so strange. And also growing up, I, you know, just for me growing up, you know, hearing about um, Korach, we, he's portrayed as like a villain, like, like um, so jealous, like kind of not angry, but like kind of, I, I want this power. And it's not just like he's coming in with a committee trying to take over the country, trying to, trying to take over the country, trying to take over the Jewish people. He, it seems like what he was trying to do was, was, was L'Shem Shemayim, was for the sake of heaven. He must have had some good, good intentions. So let's see, let's go into what was his argument. What, was, what did he come? How did Korach approach Moshe? What was his thoughts? What, were, what was he saying? So his main thing which he was giving over was Moshe. And Aaron, everyone is holy. Everyone in the Jewish people, we're all holy. We're all the Jewish nation. There's equality between us all. We all do the same mitzvahs. And there's actually an element um, um, to this equality, to this, to all the Jews being equal, which I actually find, I find amazing. There's, there's this thought that I have uh, many times when I see a Jew. And the, loads of Jews are on different levels. When you see a Jew, 
And it's an amazing, if a person could get this into the head, and I, I just think such a powerful, powerful thought to be able to look at every Jew with love. And this is, this is, this is one of the ways that I, that I try when I look at a Jew to think. You could have, imagine you get the entire history of the Jewish people, every single great person, not every great person, nine of the greatest people of the Jewish history. You get your Moshe Rabbeinu, you get your forefathers, we get so many of the Jewish luminaries, the Jewish greats of the past few thousand years. You put them in one room, but there's only nine of them. Or imagine today, you've got all the greatest Jewish rabbis that are alive today. They are in a room and they want to pray Mincha. They want to say Kaddish. They want to do a Kaddusha. They can't do that Kaddusha until you or I walk in that room. No matter at what level of Judaism we are at, we are all equal in the way that we are able to walk into that room and these rabbis, these greatest of the great, are able to daven mincha. And I think, I think that's just the dominion. I think that's just an incredible, fascinating thought to realize the power of each Jew, of each soul. And in that way, in a certain way, we are equal. But what's the difference? What's the difference between me walking into a room with nine of the greatest rabbis and all of these rabbis? So the difference is the intent. The, the intention or the, the concentration that these rabbis are able to have, the background that they have on their relationship with God is so much more powerful. Um, it, it's, it's so great and they've worked on it so much. And this, this concept is what triggered Korach. This just, story just happened after the spies. What happened with the spies? The spies had this vision. They wanted to stay in the desert. They wanted to stay in the, 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 the surroundings of the clouds of glory. There was a certain super spiritual experience that they were going through in the desert. And then when they told the Jewish people, when they spoke bad about the land of Israel, they was hoping would stay in the desert and continue, continue living this in, in, intense, beautiful, like, like, like a very strong spiritual experience, super, super spiritual experience. But what, what, what happened? Moshe turned around and said to them, no, it's not about the super spiritual experience. It's about putting action into it. It is about, you know, you've got to go into the land. You've got to work the land. You've got to work for your relationship with God. You've got to put your effort and put action into it and not just live the super spiritual experience. So when Korach heard that, when Korach heard that it's not just about, um, it's, there's not, it's not, it's not the, the super spiritual, it's the physical, it's the action we need to do. Korach thought, well, if it's about the action, then we are all equal. But Korach was very wrong. Because we need to find the balance between both. We need to find the balance of having the right intention and also doing the action. So if that's what Korach was, was kind of complaining about and moaning about, what was in it for himself? What was Kerach trying to get for himself? Kerach said, you know, Kerach told Moshe, like, maybe I should, you know, he was, he was kind of feeling that maybe he should be able to take this position and he should become one of the leaders. He was upset because of the lineage of, of from Levi for his, 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 he should have been one of the people taking over positions. So what's interesting is the Shla Kadosh, he brings a, a, a Medrash Tan Chumah that talks about Korach had a vision where he saw his descendants becoming great people. He saw his descendant Shmuel, Shmuel and Novi, who anointed the first Jewish king. And when he saw that, Korach saw this vision and he saw his descendants that were singing in, in the, in the, in the Beis HaMikdash, the Levine were singing and with his descendants. He thought, there's no, ch like, I'm, 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 I'm good. Like I'm, I'm going to be fine. And this feelings that I have, they are just, they are correct. And it's interesting. And why he thought that is tonight we're going to sing, please God. Moshe Aaron on one side. And Shmuel on the other side, they're kind of equal. So if, if Shmuel is saying is equal to Moshe and Aaron together, so Karach, who's the grandfather, he's you know, saying, oh, you know, you know, my descendants, look what they're going to be like. I deserve some honor right now. And he felt he deserved it. Now, there's an interesting story that I, that I, that I read in, 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 a, in a medrash from, King, from Shlomo Amalek. There's this man that wanted to hear and wanted to, to, to connect and talk with the birds. Shlomo Melech, the, 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 the wise king, was able to kind of know the language, know the, the, the tongue of the birds. And um, this man approaches Shlomo Melech and says to him, please, you know, teach me. Teach me the language of the birds. And Shlomo says, no, 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 it's, 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 not, a, it's not worth it. You know, it's not, it's not something that people should just know. 
And this man pestered Shlomo Malach, and eventually Shlomo kind of gave in and said, listen, I don't take no responsibility, but I'll teach you the language of the birds. And he taught him the language, the way the birds spoke. And a couple of days later, this man was walking down the street, probably along the fields, through the fields, and he heard two birds up in the, up in the, uh, up in the tree chirping. And they say to him, uh, they're chirping, they're talking to each other, and they say, see that man over there? His cow, his, he, has, he, has, he has cows, his, his cows are all going all gonna, to all gonna die, all going to get diseases and die. So this man's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I heard that's amazing. He quickly goes and sells his cows. A few days later, the same thing happens and he hears the birds talking and they say, this man's house is going to be burned down. And he quickly goes and sells his house and he's all excited, he's managed to save his house. And then a few days later, he hears the birds talking and the birds say, you see this man over there, he's going to pass away, he's going to fall, you know, fall, you know, he's going to drop dead tomorrow. And the man's like, whoa, whoa, my gosh, how can that be? What, what, what happened? He runs to King Solomon, he says, Solomon the wise, what happened? You know, you taught me the language of the birds and look, look what happened. He explained to him, why am I going to die tomorrow? He said, let me explain to you. He said, certain people, you know, we have decrees against us. There's certain things that happen to a person's life. And you were destined, your, your, your cattle was supposed to, was supposed to, was supposed to die, was supposed to kind of, um, you know, was supposed to die, and not you. You were supposed to be saved. And then it went to your house, and it kept on going up, and you kept on trying to control and change nature, change the way Hashem works, and change the way that God's plan is destined for all of us. And by trying to do too much of that, it was to his detriment. And a similar kind of idea with Korach. He was trying so hard. He had this vision. He thought he got carried away with his ego self, with his carried away with, with him thinking, you know, my descendants are going to be as great as Moshe and Aaron. I need to make sure, put myself in place so I'm able to be in that position. So he was wrong. So there was a mistake that he made. But there was something great about, you, about, about, about Korach. As we see in the end of the story with Korach, his descendants, his, not his descendants, but his children survived. His children actually were not buried with him when he was swallowed up. And the Torah says, and the earth swallowed them, and the households, and all the people who were with Korach. But Korach's sons weren't swallowed up with them, and they were saved at the last moment. What made Korach's children repent? What made them see the light? Imagine having a father who's a great man, a father who's fighting for a good cause in his mind. What made the sons repent? So it must have been, it's very interesting, the, the Arizal brings a beautiful thing, he says, we're actually going to say it tonight. The end of Tzadik Katamar Yefrach is Kairach. See, the, the, the way that a, date, um, a palm grows, it grows, grows, grows really, really big, and then it sprouts its fruit. Kairach, he, was, he, he had some greatness within him, but it was only the greatness was only going to come out in his future, in his future descendants. But still, the beauty and the power and the amazingness, what a person is able to achieve in his life, even if they make mistakes, even if they mess up, Karach's descendants became great. Karach's descendants became unbelievably great. Shmuel, how, how, much, bigger, how much bigger can, you, can, you, can one get? And also, something very interesting is, is the, the Pirkei Ovis that talks about saying of a machlekas l'shem shemaim, a machlekas for the sake of heaven, is described as um, Beis Hillel and Shammai, and a machlok is an argument which is not L'Shem Shammai, not the sake of heaven, is described as the, the argument between Korach and his people. And if the machlok is, if, if the mission is using that machlok that argument to show us that it's between Korach and his people, it must be that it seems quite close. It must be, it seems that it could be a good argument. It could be L'Shem Shammai, but he was just off by like a fine hairline. He had good intentions. He wanted it to happen, but it wasn't the right intentions. It wasn't the right way of going about it. Now, I want to just share, end off with a, with a beautiful story I heard about actions that one can do now and today in order, not in order, but actions that kind of create some greatness within our descendants and within our grandchildren and have a ripple effect going for many generations ahead. There's this... Story of a, a, a man in Israel used to love having guests, people visiting him in his house for Shabbos. And he'd go out the streets and he'd look, go to the Western Wall, he'd go find people like, come, please join me for a Shabbos. Please join me for a meal. And he sees this man just wandering around in the Western Wall and he says, please, you know, you know uh, hi, my name is Dan. You know, I'd love you to come join us for a Shabbos meal. And the guy says, what's your name? He says, oh, my name's Machi. So, okay, very nice. They had a little chat. He said, he joined them for the Shabbos meal and they go home and they, and they, they, they um, sat down and they started the meal. And then at one point 
during the, um, it looked like Mahi didn't know much about Judaism, didn't know much about his religion, or just didn't know much about the Friday night meal. And it, he asks, Mahi, maybe there's a song that you want to sing that, you know, that, you know, maybe you know one of the, any Jewish songs that we could sing together. So Mahi said, well, tonight in the, in the, in the service, in, in the davening, we actually sang a beautiful song. It's, it started like, Dai la chadodi, like something like that. Can we sing that one again? So the guy's like, well, we don't really sing it in the meal. We sing it uh, in davening, but why not? We'll sing it again. And they sang that song. And Mahi was like, wow, he just loved it. And he said, can we sing it again? And the host was like, okay, this is a bit strange. And quite a few times they kept on singing that song. By the end of the meal, this Mahi asked him to sing the song nine times. It's Lecha Doidi. They're singing Lecha Doidi in the Friday night meal nine times. And he's like, okay, that seems, seems a bit strange. So at the end of the meal, he turns to him, he says, what's, like, what's your story? Like, what's your, what, what, what is your story? He said, well, I'll tell you the truth. I'm actually from Ramallah. I am, my name is Mahmoud Ibn Shifra. I am a Jew. And only until recently did I figure out I was Jewish. I had this always this strong feeling that I didn't agree with how the Palestinian, the, the Arab Jewish conflict was, 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 was coming along. And I always had this strong feeling that I want to be connected to the Jews. So my father kicked me out of the house, um, knowing that I had these strong Jewish tendencies to talk about the Jews. And I went back in midnight to, to, to get all my belongings and my mother stops me and she's pale. And she says to me, listen, you, you know, I've never told you this before, but you are a Jew. I was a Jewish girl and I was just kind of got carried away. I married an Arab and I've been living in this world. But you are a Jew. He said, take this. And he gave her, he, he, gave, he, he gave him her uh, old Israeli uh, kind of ID. And he also gave him her a picture. He said, this, these are your grandparents. They are praying at a grave of your great ancestor. He take this picture with you and I wish you much, much success on your way. And he says, and here I am. I'm just trying to search my Judaism. I'm trying to like kind of reconnect to my people. So this man turns around and says, do you have the picture? I'd love to see it. Yeah, like, you know, kind of also kind of a bit worried, like maybe give some proof. And this man takes the picture from Machi. And he looks at it and he digs in a bit of a dusty picture and he opens and he sees and he sees these, you know, like an old, you know, Yemenite families praying at a grave in Safas and he looks at the grave and the grave is of Reb Shlomo al the, 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 the composer of the Chadodi prayer, the, the song that we sing. And he was just blown away and he says, it's so powerful how someone, the, the Reb Shlomo al who created and composed this beautiful tune, this beautiful song, he, you know, he was a great man, and he was able to, through his greatness, through the composing of Al-Khadadi, and through who he was, to, for generation to generation, eventually have an impact on some, some, some young boy, and some young teenager who was brought up in an Arab, Arab village, and was able to bring him back. So just to sum up what we've, you know, what, just to sum up what we've, what we've spoken about is, hey, we need intent, we need action, we need a balance of both. We need to be able to realize the power of each Jew, the power, the, the equalness, the way we do mitzvahs, the potan tefillin tzitzes. We're all equal and it's all beautiful at every mitzvah that we do. And Kerach was able to merit having those children because he did something great. There was something great that he did. He believed in the equality. He believed in the, the, the beauty and the greatness of the Jewish people. And, and that's what we should be able to do, take away from us, for all of us, to be able to see the, the greatness of the Jewish people, to be able to kind of hopefully have a level head of looking at situations, not jumping into arguments, not trying to look at our ego and see, you know, maybe it's, I've got to do some serious action in order to implement some uh, future goal. And we've got to try our best to achieve the greatness within ourselves and the Jewish people and for our children and for generations to come. I just want to wish you, thank you so much and I wish you a beautiful Shabbos Kodesh. Thank you.